Then in the book of Matthew, let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. Influence people by example, not by threats and uh, manipulations. Chauvinists of race, religion, tribe or gender should stop wasting our time and opportunities with their shallow schemes. Action will inevitably invite counteraction. Oppression will invite resistance. That is why we, the resistance fighters of Uganda, only fight just wars. We obhar and just wars. The promoters of unjust wars lose most of the time. These are wars of imperialism, conquest, domination, etc. In the 500 years of European aggression against Africa, it was only from 1912, when the African National Congress was founded in South Africa, that modern freedom fighters came forward to lead the African resistance, the traditional, illiterate African chiefs having failed to defend our sovereignty except for Menelik of Ethiopia who defeated the Italian aggressors in 1896. It took the modern African resistance fighters only 82 years to clear the whole of Africa of these invaders, with South Africa being the last to get freedom in 1994. In that 82 years, you had the Mau Mau in Kenya, the resistance wars in Algeria, Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Namibia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, ETC. We won everywhere. Our African brothers in all these wars won. But after losing a lot of time, why had the imperialists thought of dominating us in the first place? On the common human problems, prosperity through trade, and that's why I'm very happy to see you here. When you are outside there, you may get stereotypes about Africa, that Africa, they have no food, they are starving. Here we are dying from food. We have so much food here. So those images which you see about some bad situations don't think they are represent the whole of Africa. Africa has got everything. Here we have everything. What we need from other people are markets. If you say you are a Democrat, why don't you respect the, the freedom of everybody? How can you say you are a Democrat and yet you want other people to be slaves? Why do, why do you not seek to influence people by your good example instead of manipulation, lectures, and threats? As bu bullies, the Europeans used their progress in, in technology of shipbuilding and the use of gunpowder to conquer Africa, the Americas, Asia, and the Pacific. European looting of the rest of humanity through slavery, imperialism, colonialism, semi-colonialism, conquest, and extermination of the indigenous people in some cases went on for 500 years. Instead of humanity celebrating the scientific advances in shipbuilding, the wider use of gunpowder which had been discovered by the Chinese around 800 BC, 
the wider use of quinine against malaria that the Spanish had learned from the indigenous Indians of, of the Americas, the printing press, the steam engine, and all the other inventions were to spend 500 years in anti-colonial wars to expel the evil parasites. In the case of Africa, it is only in 1994 that, that the indigenous people of South Africa regained control of their country. So we had to spend 500 years dealing with idiotic schemes by greedy people. The oppressors miscalculate when they use their temporary advantage in science and technology to think that they can use that to indefinitely oppress other people. The oppressed will learn, catch up, and defeat the oppressor. You may get stereotypes about Africa, that Africa, they have no food, they are starving. Here we are dying from food. We have so much food here. So th th those images which you see about some bad situations don't think they are, represent the whole of Africa. Africa has got everything. Here we have everything. What we need from other people are markets and investments. But we shall not only sell to you, we shall also buy from you. We are not like others. It gives me great pleasure to welcome your excellencies, the heads of state and governments, and the heads of delegations of the non-aligned movement countries. This grouping of countries accounts for 4.46 billion people of the world. It was started by our far-sighted elders in the persons of His Excellency Sukarno of Indonesia, His Excellency Jawaharlal Nehru of India, His Excellency Gamal Abdul Nasser of Egypt, and His Excellency Chow Enlai of China, when they met in Bandung, Indonesia, 1955. That time I was in primary three in the school. So in a very nice trending video online, the president of a Uganda, doctor, not doctor, but President Yoweri Museveni, has been able to say something that many African leaders find it hard to say. They find it hard to say because they don't want to have problems with the West. However, this president called it for what it is. He said these ones. Why not respect the rights of Africans and the rights of other people when you say that you're a democrat? A democratic government is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That is how Abraham Lincoln, an American statesman who was also once an American president, said about democracy and what is uh, what is the president uh, Yoweri Museveni speaking about Yoweri Museveni is um criticizing his he's rebuking the evil deeds of the west the west i mean europe and i mean usa because many of uh, the world democracy they tend to create the model they create a model and they want all african leaders and they want all African uh, countries and citizens to follow that model when, where they create it. When they say people are, ought to be gay, then people ought to be gay as they say so. When they say uh, this country is bad, all countries should look east and say this country is bad or looking west saying this country is bad. But no, the president is wise. So let's jump in and see how it went by. I'll give you my thoughts towards the end of the video where we will have a critical analysis of the video. The first 
summit of the non-aligned movement took place in Belgrade, Yugoslavia in 1961 and was attended by Afghanistan, Algeria, Burma, Cambodia, Ceylon, Congo, Cuba, Cyprus, Ethiopia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea Conakry, I think here we're talking of Guinea Conakry, India, Indonesia, I Iraq, Lebanon, Mali, Morocco, Nepal, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Sudan, Tunisia, United Arab Republic, e this Egypt, Yemen, and Yugoslavia. The emergence of the non-aligned movement was a necessary antidote to the irrational polarization of the world of that time between the capitalist Western countries and the communist, mainly Eastern countries. By the early 1960s, our student group was already beginning to be active. We were the third generation of the African anti-colonial freedom fighters. The first generation had been the African-American Pan-Africanists, such as Marcus Garvey, George Pademore, W.B. Du Bois, that had been joined by those who founded the African National Congress of South Africa in 1912. By 1900, the whole of Africa, except for Ethiopia, had been colonized. This direct colonization of the whole of the African continent was the culmination of 400 years of the plunder of Africa by the evil imperialist forces in the form of slave trade and the genocide wars that went with it. The newly discovered Americas, Asia, China, and the Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, and so on, had been similarly aggressed, colonized, semi-colonized, like in the case of China, and plundered. Africa's capitulation, Africa's surrender, had been in part on account of our egocentric chiefs and kings who out of selfishness could not unite us to fight these evil people. The second generation of the African freedom fighters were people like Mze Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, Marimu Nyerere of Tanzania, Nelson Mandela of South Africa, ETC, who emerged in the 1940s. When we therefore came on the scene in the 1960s, we were generation three of the anti-colonial fighters. We seriously studied the interplay of forces that had ultimately led Africa in such a calamity. In those studies, we use the, the instrument of political economy, which is a study that helps us to discover the fundamental laws that govern the motion of society, 
from one social system to another. What prompts society to change from one form of social system to another? That was our big study. We had to study the dynamics of social change. In that study, we discovered that, that man, the Homo sapiens sapiens, who emerged here in Africa four and a half million years ago, had been the main actor. Initially, this wise man, that is what Homo sapiens sapiens means, was coping with the oppression of man by nature in the form of the floods, the droughts, the diseases, the wild animals, the earthquakes, etc. These natural phenomena were, of course, oppressing other, other creatures, such as the wild animals, the plants, as well. However, those other creatures could do little or nothing to tame nature. The only thing they could do was to adapt themselves to nature in order to survive. That is how the beaver in the cold climates hibernates during the winters so as to survive. It is only a man that has the ability to try and tame the natural phenomena and harness them to improve his quality of life. Why does man have this capacity? It is because of the three characteristics of man. These are a superior brain that is able to reason and not only act by instinct. A hand that can make and use tools to do work. And by pedalism, ability to walk on two legs with the head up instead of the head being down like a reptile trying to navigate among ground-based obstacles that enables man to see far and think. These characteristics enabled man to invent tools, starting with stone tools, wooden tools, iron tools, until today, when he is able to make tractors and machine tools, etc. These tools enabled man to make scientific inventions that precipitated qualitative and quantitative changes in society. The invention of fire one and a half million years ago caused society to move from dwelling in trees to dwelling in caves and on the ground generally. Caves were more comfortable than the trees. The invention of the domestication of crops around 10,000 years ago, the domestication of the livestock around 12,000 years ago, the invention of the iron around 1,500 BC, the steam engine, the printing press, electricity, the railway, the automobiles, the aircraft, the automation, vaccines, the invention of penicillin, the invention of, of quinine, ETC, enabled man to cope better and enabled him to harness natural phenomena and items for the betterment of his life. Our study of political economy, of creation and society, therefore, enabled us to discover that the best pr primer of changes, primer means initiator of changes in society, is the development of science and technology. Therefore, societies 
that move forward their levels of science and technology lay a basis for positive social change and should be encouraged by the progressive forces of the world. This encouragement should be irrespective of the social systems of the concerned societies. However, when man's inventiveness was handling the operation of man by nature, another form of operation of man emerged. This was the operation of man by fellow men. So man had two problems now. Operation of man by nature, operation of man by fellow men. This was the operation of man by fellow men. Karl Marx is one of the few analysts that seems to have tackled this new problem for man accurately. He pointed out that it was only during the time of the primitive communism, when man was still living in hunter-gatherer societies, that society was free of oppression of man by fellow men. Thereafter, all subsequent social systems had elements of oppression of fellow men of de varying degrees. This was in the form of wars of conquest, wars of aggression, slavery, imperialism, neocolonialism, colonialism, feudalism, primitive capitalist accumulation, chauvinism, etc. These elements of exploitation are totally unnecessary and only propelled by greed. Was it necessary for the Ottomans to block the Europeans from using the Silk Road that had been pioneered by Marco Polo when they captured Constantinople in 1453? When the Europeans were thus blocked, they started looking for a sea route around Africa, led by the Portuguese, one of them being Prince Henry the Navigator of Portugal. This was a legitimate and positive response forced on the Europeans by the unreasonable actions of the Ottomans. As a consequence of that effort, Christopher Columbus reached the Americas in 1492, and Vasco da Gama went around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa in 1498. By this time, the positive efforts of the Europeans looking for a sea route around Africa had already started being polluted by the evil of slave taking by the Portuguese. It is said that the first slaves were captured by the Portuguese in the year 1441. The two great achievements of discovering the Americas and going around Africa by sea soon proved harbingers of great evil to Africa, the Americas, and Asia. As bu bullies, as bullies, the Europeans used their progress in, in technology of shipbuilding and the use of gunpowder to conquer Africa, the Americas, Asia, and the Pacific. European looting of the rest of humanity through slavery, imperialism, colonialism, semi-colonialism, conquest, and extermination 
of the indigenous people in some cases went on for 500 years. Instead of humanity celebrating the scientific advances in shipbuilding, the wider use of gunpowder which had been discovered by the Chinese around 800 BC, the wider use of quinine against malaria that the Spanish had learned from the indigenous Indians of, of the Americas, the printing press, the steam engine, and all the other inventions we had to spend 500 years in anti-colonial wars to expel the evil parasites. In the case of Africa, it is only in 1994 that, that the indigenous people of South Africa regained control of their country. So we had to spend 500 years dealing with idiotic schemes by greedy people. The oppressors miscalculate when they use their temporary advantage in science and technology to think that they can use that to indefinitely oppress other people. The oppressed will learn, catch up, and defeat the oppressor. That is why empires always all collapse. All empires always collapse. The idea of, of empires is an evil idea. I don't want to impose my beliefs on you, but as a Christian, in the book of the Acts of Apostles, it says that empires are evil. You go and read the book of the, of the, book of the Acts of our Apostles. St. Paul describes empires as evil. People are supposed to be free, not to be conquered by empires. We should only have free associations of nations people of common or shared origin interacting for mutual advantage with the peoples of the world. Therefore, we, the resistance fighters of Uganda, are flabbergasted and look down with contempt at the philosophical, ideological, and strategic shallowness of some of the actors of the world. Why not respect freedom of everybody if you say you are a Democrat? If you say you are a Democrat, why don't you respect the, the freedom of everybody? How can you say you are a Democrat and yet you want other people to be slaves? Why do you not seek influence? Why do, why do you not seek to influence people by your good example? instead of manipulation, lectures, and threats. Therefore, the non-aligned movement was correct. The illogical po polarization of the 1940s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, between the capitalists and communists was wrong. Why should new ideas cause tension? This was the mistake of people like Metternich of Austria-Hungary, who thought that the new ideas of capitalism that were challenging the feudal order in Europe could be blocked by war. The Austria-Hungarian Empire ended up disappearing from the face of the earth, and capitalism did not stop spreading. Our stand is that the world should concentrate. So the West should honestly uphold and support democracy and human rights in Africa. It should acknowledge the inherent value in fostering a world where these principles are universally respected. 
So we'll have a, a closer look at the historical context of democracy and human rights. Africa, with its rich tapestry of diverse culture, history, and society, has been grappling with the undermath of colonialism, political instability, and economic challenges. The struggle for self-determination and sovereignty has been a prevailing theme in the past colonial era. Recognizing the historical context of Africa's journey towards democracy is crucial for understanding the complexities and nuances that shape the regional political landscape. So what is democratic values? Should they be universal or democratic values should not be universal? Democracy is often lauded as a universal value, transcending geographical boundaries. The West, having experienced the benefits, the benefits of democratic governance, should recognize that the principles of freedom, equality, and participation are not inclusive, are not exclusive to any particular region. By respecting the democratic aspiration of African countries, the West aligns itself with the belief that all people, regardless of their geographical location, deserve the right to self-governance and political representation. So stability and prosperity. When there is universal stability, when you claim to be a democrat, you have to respect the freedom of other people. Does it cause stability and eventually, does it benefit the society? Yes, there is stability and economic prosperity where we have universal democracy. Respecting democracy in African countries is not merely a moral imperative, but it's also a pragmatic choice to the West. Stable democracies are more likely to foster economic development as political stability and the rule of law are conducive to investment and growth. By supporting the establishment and consolidation of democratic institutions in Africa, the West contributes to the creation of conducive environment for economic prosperity, benefiting both Africans and their international partners. Human rights are um, inalienable. Human rights are not alien. We don't have alien human rights. Human rights are universal. Freedom is universal. Human rights are the bedrock upon which the edifice of a democracy stands. The West, having championed the cause of human rights globally, should recognize the inalienable nature of these rights to all individuals, regardless of their, regardless of their geographic origin. So, uh, respecting and upholding human rights in African countries is commitment to the universal dignity of every human being and serves as a testament to the West unwavering dedication to justice and equality. You know, in an era of increasing global interconnectedness, the, fa the fate of nations are intertwined. Challenges such as climate change, uh, pandemics, and transnational terrorism require collaborative efforts on a global scale. So by respecting democracy and human rights in all African countries, the West contributes to the creation of a more stable and a just world order. An Africa, an Africa that is politically stable, economically prosperous, and respectful of human rights become a valuable partner in addressing shared global challenges. So, this is what you need to know. The West should recognize the inherent value of respecting African democracy and human rights in African countries. They should give us our freedom. Not even give us. They should respect. We already have our freedom. They should respect our freedom. The recognition of our freedom and justice and democracy goes beyond moral consideration. It is a strategic imperative for fostering a global stability, economic prosperity, and the advancement of human of universal human dignity by extending genuine support and collaboration the west can contribute to the emergence of a world where democratic values and human rights are cherished and upheld by all nations transcending continental boundaries yeah so it was so wonderful what the president uh, you were with seven did it's we have we have we need to have more leaders like this leaders who Come forth, speak it for what it is. I like how authentic the president was. He's really, really authentic. He's like a, a Julius Malema of East Africa. We, we, to the West, we have also others. African leaders should stand up and speak upon the freedom of Africans. We should not be sanctioned. 
We should not never we should never use the US dollar. Africans should trade with their own currencies. The US dollar is a currency of the West. We should use our own own currency. We should have a borderless country, a borderless policy for all Africans moving to Africa within Africa. African diaspora who wants to move to Africa should be given the freedom, should be given the 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 privilege. This thing of visa, ETA, these things are things that the government should do away with. There's a lot of uh, contribution the African diaspora can bring even if we leave out the things of ETA and visa. There's a lot African Americans contribute to uh, the growth of Africa. And that is just African Americans. But we're talking about Africans. Africans, let's be glad we have presidents like <coughs> Museveni. I really love what he said. <coughs> I really, really love what he said, you know? So um, let's um, end the video here and do subscribe to the channel. Do subscribe. And also um, check me uh, on my Patreon. You can become a member and subscribe. <coughs> subscribe. <coughs>